Hi guys, in this video we're going to go over vectors in R and here's the code from the previous video and we saw that when by, that by default we're dealing with vectors in R because when you just assign a single value into an object in R here we assigned a word into an object called X that this object by default is a vector and that value goes into the first element of that vector. So it wasn't really clear when we began the last video that we're dealing with vectors in R. But when it, we started printing out stuff, we saw this one in square brackets. And that tells us that, okay, here we assign the complex number to x. x is a vector by default. And the first uh, element in that vector is, is, is the value we assign to it. Now what we want to do is add more elements to our vector. And here in this vectors.r file, we're going to do that by using this C function. And the C function, if you go to the help tab over here and you type in C here in search, you can look at what the help function does. You can read about it. Look at the basic description. It says this generic function uh, combines, this is a generic function which combines its argument. All it's doing is combining values into a vector or list. In our case, it's going to be a vector. So when you pass in arguments to this C function, here's the C function, and here's open parentheses, close parentheses, in between, whatever you put separated by a comma is going to be combined into a vector. And one thing to note is that when you use vectors, all the elements need to be the same data type. So here, if I want to create a character vector, I want to pass in two characters. Uh, one is a word called hello, the other is a word called hi. And then I'm going to assign that to the object X and print it out. And then if you only want to print the first element in the vector, you can use the square brackets notation that we're familiar with. We've seen that before to print the first element. So I'll put a comment here. And here you can print the second element. <clears throat> so if I run these four lines of code, look what happened. It assigns hello and hi uh, into x as a vector. And here it printed out x. And when you print by default, it prints from left to right the entire vector. And it starts by at, at the first element of the vector. So here's hello, and it says this is the first element. And then it continues to print the other elements out here. Here's the second element. Here's the third element. And it'll continue printing all the way over until it goes to the next line. And then you'll see the index of whatever that the next line. So in this case, um, <clears throat> we only have two elements, so it doesn't go over lines. So you can see here's the entire vector. And if you want to print the first element, you just do x square brackets 1, and there's it printed out the first element, which is the word hello, and here it printed out the second. Um, it printed out the second. It printed out the second uh, element in the vector x, which is the word hi. But notice when you print, it still has this one square brackets, which is telling you the output itself has is a vector of length 1. Okay, so even though this says x2, don't be confused by this one here. This one is just saying, you know, how, what is the length of this? Um, <clears throat> well, actually, it's saying, you know, the output is a vector, and this is the first element in that vector. So you can see, and always when you have output, you're going to have these one in square brackets, and it's going to tell you that that's the first element in the vector. Now let's just run this other code because all I did was create a vector of integers by using the C function and then I printed it out and I print, also printed out the class here. And remember the class just tells you what what is the data type of this object. What is the, um, <clears throat> what is the, is it an integer, is it a numeric, what is it? Here I it created a numeric vector again with the C function. Here I created uh, 
a logical vector. Notice always when you use uh, logical values like true or false, they have to be in capital letters. And here I created a complex vector using the C function. Very simple and straightforward. It, you just put C and then some data in between, and then you print it out. So if we print this, you could see my vectors are being printed. You know, here's the complex vector, and so on and so forth. Uh, one thing I'll show you is that if you do something like this, X is a sequence of numbers from 1 to 100. So this, what is this going to do? Well, let's let's print this and see what it does. Oops, and print it. Here's what it does down here. Um, it prints out 100 numbers from 1 to 100. And it's saying that 1 is the first element in the array. And this is what I wanted to show you before. When, when you print, the vector starts from the left, it goes all the way to the right, and then it goes to the next line. So here, 21 was the last number printed uh, in the first row. And then it went to 22, and that's why this says 22 here, because this is the 22nd element in the vector right here. This is the 23rd element, this is the 24th element, so on and so forth. And just in case, if you want to see what class this is, it's going to be um, an integer class. And that's because when you do this sequence function, it, it, it makes it an integer. So I just want to show you how the printing looks with, with a bigger vector. In the next video, um, we will go over something called coercion, which is what if you try to put you know, a word and a numeric value into a vector? What happens? Because right now, Everything in our vectors are the same. These are both characters. These are both integers. These are both numeric. These are both true, uh, true or false. These are both complex. In the next video, we're going to see what can happen when you put a numeric and a word together. Um, and we'll go through that next time.